Hello students, so we will continue our discussion on uh, bifurcation theory and I think uh, uh, we have uh, uh, covered um, up to um, uh, one dimensional uh, planar motion and uh, we will now talk about uh, uh, Hoff bifurcation. But uh, before we do that, um, if you remember at the very beginning I gave an example uh, where I talked about, uh, I, I mentioned one theorem and I also gave one example Poincare uh, Benedictson uh, theorem. So, we will uh, try to uh, define some uh, terms and definitions which will actually uh, lead to that uh, theorem and at the same time it will, it will also help us uh, to um, give an idea of what do we actually mean by Hoff uh, bifurcation um, uh, for uh, two dimensional uh, um, uh, dynamical systems or two dimensional motion right. So, uh, uh, I will start with uh, some definitions in the next class and if time permits then uh, I will introduce the Hoff bifurcation. So, the very first definition that goes like this. So, we, we know what is uh, what do we mean by um, bifurcation um, theory. So, uh, or bifurcation in general. So, we are given uh, x dot or x dash whatever uh, equals to f of x. So, let us call this as equation number 1. We are still in the st scalar case. So, this is, a, um, this is a given general equation, general autonomous, autonomous OD or uh, uh, equation ordinary differential equation or just autonomous equation. Okay. And uh, here f, uh, here f can be, uh, so this can be a scalar equation or a vector equation. So, say f is mapping from R n to R n and uh, n is greater or equal to 1, n is greater or equal to 1 is locally Lipschitz. So, the reason why we assume locally Lipschitz is that uh, we also want to make sure there exists a solution. So, because of the Lipschitz ness, um, um, I mean if, if it is continuous then you have a solution and if it is locally Lipschitz then at least uh, we can say that the solution is unique, right. So, f is locally Lipschitz and uh, here basically um, uh, this implies that, um, that uh, so f uh, by existence theorem, by existence theorem from very beginning, existence theorem um, any initial value problem of type 1 um, has a unique solution. This we know has a unique solution. If it is continuous, f is continuous then we have a solution, if f is ellipsis then we have a unique solution. Now, uh, we note that, we note that for n equals to 1, uh, we can always solve 1 for the, for the general solution using separation of variable, using separation of variables. So, this you have already learnt, I mean if it is a first order OD then you uh, try to uh, keep the terms in x and t on the uh, on, on each side of the equation. So, that is like separation of variable and then we can integrate or we can also go via integrating factor and all that. So, as long as we have n equals to 1, it is relatively simple uh, to deal with these kind of equations, right. So, using separation of variable is one such method. Um, so, interesting cases, interesting interesting cases arise when n is greater or equal to 2. That is when the actual uh, analysis happens, right. So, when you have n greater or equal to 2, then we can say that, okay, let us in inspect the equation um, uh, because we have a system. So, you can talk about stability and uh, equilibrium points, uh, then uh, bifurcation points and all that. So, when n is greater or equal to 2, that is um, actually the interesting um, uh, case basically. All right. So, let um, x t, let x t be a solution, be a solution 
um, of equation 1, right, of equation 1 on its maximal interval of existence, maximal interval, this we already know, what do we mean by maximal interval of existence, right, maximal interval of existence uh, alpha comma beta, suppose this is the maximum interval of inter existence, then the set um, or uh, let us call it as um, uh, capital lambda maybe, uh, all such x t comma x t such that uh, t belongs to alpha comma beta, right, in R n plus 1. So, x is in R n and then you have t, so R n plus 1 uh, is called a solution curve, is called a solution curve to 1, to equation 1, to 1 and uh, the projection and uh, the projection, the projection of this solution curve, of this solution curve, solution curve into R n um, will be all such x t such that t belongs to uh, alpha comma beta is called the orbit is called the orbit or the trajectory or trajectory. So, this also we already know this definition. So, the solution x t is basically the trajectory. So, you can think of uh, d x d t equals to some f x. So, x t is actually giving you the path that this particle is following, right. So, x t is I mean in case of uh, uh, let us say 2 d or 3 d um, motion then this can be a displacement of a particle and then d r d t equals to some function of um, t or function of r and t. So, from there you can write down the path that it, this particle is following and um, that is actually your the orbit or the trajectory. So, it has different uh, terminologies, but it all means the same, right. So, uh, the space r n the space r n um, where all orbits, where all the orbits, all the orbits, all the orbits lie or stay um, is called the phase space, is called the phase space, right, is called the phase space. Since the phase space, since the phase space has one dimension, one dimension less than the solution space, less than the, um, less than the solution space or less than the R n plus 1, uh, where all the solution stays, where all the solution curve stays, solution curves stay, comma, um, we often use orbits rather than solution curve, rather than solution curves. Obviously, it is always easy to solve a one dimensional problem than solving a 2 D problem. So, here also if you are um, given a choice to work with R n or R n plus 1, you work with R n. So, R n is the is the space um, uh, where all the um, trajectories are there and R n plus 1 is the space where all the solution curves are there, which involves one dimension more. So, we will stick to the um, orbits, that means the curves or the trajectories that are in R n. Okay. So, now, um, we also know that uh, uh, it can be proven or it can be shown, it can be shown that if x t is a solution of equation 1, then 
of equation 1, then um, for any c in R uh, x of t minus c uh, is a solution of uh, 1 on the interval interval alpha plus c and beta plus c. So, that means, it is a solution of 1 on alpha comma beta. So, you may add as well add this. So, obviously, if you are going uh, t minus c back, so then in that case, uh, if it wants to be the solution of 1, so you have to add alpha plus c and beta plus c. That, so, that is very obvious, because uh, if you put um, at, at t is equals to alpha plus c, uh, then in, in that case, that is x of alpha. So, that is where we have the initial value, right. So, this makes uh, sense. Uh, one example could be, let us go to next slide. So, one example could be consider the system, consider the system um, x 1 dash or x 1 dot equals to x 2 and uh, x 2 dot or x 2 dash equals to minus of x 1. So, clearly, clearly uh, first observation is that x 1 equals to 0 and x 2 equals to 0 is a solution on the entire real line, because 0 0 always satisfies. So, on minus infinity to plus infinity, whose solution curve is a solution, uh, let us call it as equation 1, is a solution of 1 on uh, minus infinity to plus infinity, whose solution curves or whose solution curve is the t axis, the t axis in um, R 3, right. And uh, the orbit is the origin in R 2, right. So, 0 0 satisfies the equation, we can also determine the other curve, but 0 0 satisfies the equation. So, 0 0 is a point in R 2. So, we have uh, orbit in R 2 and when you are taking t comma x t, so t is any variable in R and uh, x t will be 0 0. So, then it becomes a t axis in R 3 or basically t comma 0 0, um, t comma 0 comma 0. So, that is in R 3. So, this is uh, basically the solution curve. And uh, another one is uh, x 1 equals to, so this is one curve, uh, then the second curve will be x 1 is equals to sin t and uh, x 2 equals to cos t, x 2 equals to cos t. You can verify whether it is a solution or not. So, x 2 dx, uh, dx 2 by dt will be minus of sin t, so that is minus of sin t and here cos t. So, it satisfies the equation. Of course, if you are given initial condition, then you have to take extra precaution that whether it will satisfy that equation or not or you have to determine the arbitrary constants and all. So, since there is no initial condition given, uh, we can see right away that it satisfies equation 1 um, is a solution on solution of 1 on minus infinity to plus infinity whose solution curve is the is uh, a helix. It is a helix in R 3 obviously, in R 2 it is a sin t cos t, then you have t sin t cos t. So, that is the equation of a helix in R 2 and the orbit and the orbit uh, is the unit circle is the unit circle, circle in R 2. You just do x 1 square plus x 2 square that is equals to 1. So, we have helix in R 3 and circle in R 2, right. So, that is what we mean by um, orbit or trajectory and uh, solution curve, right. Now, uh, there is a small result uh, or theorem. So, I will just state it. Uh, proof for proof, you have to look into the textbooks that we have recommended. Uh, so, there exists a unique orbit. There exists 
a unique orbit of uh, equation 1 through each point in the phase space through each point in phase space right right so the, this uh, uh, statements uh, itself uh, uh, very much uh, uh, straightforward. So basically, you have a solution uh, curve in the uh, in, in in the phase space, um, and you have orbit in uh, in R two. So basically, uh, sorry, in uh, one dimension less space. So obviously, every orbit um, is unique, right? And uh, it will pass through um, each point in the phase space. So that means, uh, uh, in this example uh, here, we had the orbit x one square plus x 2 square equals to 1. So, that is x 1 equals to sin t and x 2 equals to cos t. So, this will basically be passing through uh, each point in uh, in the phase space actually right. And uh, um, now, um, yeah, so, uh, so each point in phase space uh, means uh, um, whatever. Uh, so, for example, if we consider the points x 1 square all, all the points that are lying on the circle. So, obviously, the unique orbit uh, or the orbit will pass through each point in the phase space that is in R n not R n plus 1, but in R n right. So, the statement is very uh, uh, straightforward. Um, now, I would like to define um, uh, a corollary or state a corollary corollary which actually comes from this theorem. So, let x equals to uh, a uh, be an equilibrium, be an equilibrium point, equilibrium or equilibrium point of equation 1, right. Equation 1 of that one, sorry. So, here not the example, but this equation 1, right. Let us go of equation 1 and uh, assume that uh, assume that assume that a solution um, x t of one uh, satisfies satisfies x t not equals to zero, uh, not equals to a, and uh, limit t tends to um, alpha positive um, x t equals to a or limit t tends to beta negative. So, either or x t equals to uh, a. So, then alpha must be minus infinity or alpha must be uh, a beta must be plus infinity right and uh, second uh, so this is first statement uh, first corollary second corollary corollary is assume that assume that uh, x t is a solution of equation 1 uh, satisfying limit t tends to minus infinity x t equals to a or limit t tends to plus infinity x t equals to a then x t equals to a is an equilibrium point. Is an equilibrium point right. Okay. Now, so the proof, uh, I will prove just the first part, uh, the corollary one. So, I will just prove the first part and the second part proof will go as it is. So, assume that, assume that limit um, t tends to alpha positive 
x t equals to a with alpha belonging to minus infinity to plus infinity, right. Then the orbits, then the orbits uh, x t uh, and x equals to a, x t and x equals to a both passes through, both passes through the point A in the phase space, right, according to that theorem. So, that means every orbit um, um, is a, every unique orbit must pass through each point of the phase space. So, x t is an orbit and x equals to A uh, that is also an orbit. So, they both must pass through each point that means A is a point in the phase space. So, it must pass through the point A in the phase space, but uh, this contradicts, but uh, this contradicts, contradicts uh, the theorem 1 the theorem 1 that means this theorem where is that yeah let us call it as theorem 1 this contradicts theorem 1 how um, and hence um, it must be that a is equals to minus infinity right so x t and x equals to they are we are saying that they are two um, uh, unique uh, orbits but uh, they are passing through the point x equals uh, this point a in the phase space. So, this actually contradicts the, to the statement of the theorem that unique uh, every unique uh, or there exists a unique orbit uh, of equation 1 through each point in the phase space. So, the orbit is not unique then. So, therefore, this leads to a contradiction and therefore, a must be minus of infinity and uh, similarly we can prove that uh, similarly, similarly uh, limit uh, t tends to beta negative uh, x t uh, equals to uh, a implies that uh, beta must be implies that beta must be infinity positive beta must be infinity positive. So, these are the two theorems uh, based on uh, uh, the orbits and the phase space. Now, I am going to define uh, something called uh, uh, Jordan curve. So, Jordan curve or because uh, we need uh, the idea of this uh, orbits and uh, uh, how do we call orbits uh, as flow or why do we call orbits as flow. So, that I am going to motivate now. So, you already know Jordan curve, right? Jordan curve, Jordan curve. So, a curve. Um, A curve uh, C in R n uh, is said to be is said to be a closed curve. Is said to be a closed curve if it is the graph of a, a non-constant function. non-constant function x belonging to set of all continuous function defined over a v r n such that x at a equals to x at b. Furthermore, c is said to be simple closed curve. Uh, furthermore, C is said to be a simple closed curve if um, the function x also satisfies x at t1 is not equals to x at t 2 for a less than uh, equal to t 1 less than t 2 less than or equal to b. 
and uh, a simple closed curve closed curve in R2 is also called a Jordan curve. a Jordan curve right. So, this now um, that we have defined a Jordan curve now we can state a small lemma or a again theorem. So, um, theorem 2. So, it says that let x t be a non trivial solution be a non that means non zero solution non trivial solution of equation x dash equals to f of x call it as equation number 1 um, on r on r then xt is a periodic solution is a periodic solution uh, if and only if um, the orbit if and only if the orbit gamma for x t uh, is a simple closed curve right. So, if x t is a non trivial solution of uh, x dash equals to f x on r that means, we are uh, in real line setting. So, then uh, x t is a periodic solution or x t leads to a periodic solution um, if and only if the orbit gamma. So, gamma is equals to all such x t such that t is in alpha comma beta uh, is a simple closed curve right. So, the proof is there and it is a fairly simple uh, uh, um, theorem. So, you can look into uh, the textbooks. Um, another uh, small theorem uh, in this context is um, uh, this one. So, theorem 3. So, for x 0 in R n uh, denote x t uh, x t equals to phi of t comma x 0. The solution of x s equals to f of x. Um, satisfying satisfying x at 0 equals to x 0 and assume assume that it is maximal interval of existence maximal interval of existence existence is r the entire real line then for any t 1 t 2 in R, uh, we have phi of t 2 of uh, phi of uh, t 1 comma x 0 is equals to phi of t 2 plus t 1 x 0. Right. All right. And uh, the next definition or the theorem that I wanted to mention is uh, uh, about limit cycle. So omega omega limit and uh, um, alpha limit. Uh, they also connect uh, this uh, orbits and uh, uh, basically uh, uh, this phase space and all that. So we need uh, the definition of uh, this. Uh, periodic orbit or uh, omega psych, uh, omega limit to state our po poincare benedictson theorem and from there we go to the hobbs bifurcation right so all these basic terminologies uh, actually connects to a broader theory of dynamical system so they are all coming from uh, dynamical systems and we know that dynamical system is a generalization of your general um, of your uh, normal ordinary differential equations but in a more um, um, 
how to say uh, complex way because there we are always dealing with a system of equations and all that. So, all these terminologies that I am uh, giving you here, they are basically uh, selected from dynamical systems and I am presenting here. Um, it is obviously, it is not the extensive list. Um, so, here I am only listing the statements or the definitions that are needed to just mention the Hopf bifurcation theorem, right. So, I will uh, stop here today and I will continue this discussion in our next class and um, yeah, I will see you there.